And as always, welcome in and welcome back, my math as bad party people, Coach Anderson here. Let's go ahead and tackle this question here where most people, when they're trying out, you know, 3D objects for the first time in geometry, they might be a little overwhelmed looking at something like this and automatically think that if we have the length, the width, and the height, that we're automatically going to be finding volume. So let me show you how to tell the difference here between knowing volume and surface area as the requirement for the problem. So stay tuned to the end, I gotcha. So first things first, as always my party people, what do we do? We wanna know what we want. We gotta read that question every single time. So right over here, how many square meters of wrapping paper will George need to completely cover the present? So let's go ahead and get that highlight out of the way because I'm really gonna highlight the most important information that's gonna help you get this down the right way. And that's going to be right over here. So how many? But then right here, square meters of wrapping paper. That's the dead giveaway for everything that's about to happen next. So again, square meters. If you've been to my classes before, if you've heard me talk about geometry before, you may have heard me say this. If we're talking about, you know, let's go ahead and say we're talking in meters. So if we're just talking regular meters, well, that's just a distance. That's just a distance. And so that could just be a length, a straight line distance, a perimeter. You know, that's just all that is, just a regular distance. If we have square meters, we're talking about area. So when we have a square unit, we are talking about area. And when we have a cubic unit, well, what we're dealing with here, that's going to go ahead and be volume. So ask yourself real quick, when we take a look at this red highlight here for the question, which of these are we being propositioned to find? Are we looking for just a regular distance? Are we looking for area? Or are we looking for volume? And so right here, that's the giveaway. Square meters. That's easily how you can tell. We have a 3D object that's going to be, you know, a gift. And we're trying to wrap the entire gift. So we're talking about the area of the surface. Square meters. That says area. And then wrapping paper. Remember, the wrapping paper for a gift goes on the outside of a gift. So that's how we know we are dealing with area, but specifically surface area in this question. So feel free to rewind to really hear that again, because it's a really huge, huge advantage that you'll have if you simply understand how to read units. So we are looking for surface area here. And so the next question really is, well, how do you calculate surface area? You know, there's a formula to everything. There's absolutely a formula to everything, but I'm going to explain this formula and how it works. So write this down. The volume, excuse me, the surface area formula is going to be two times the length width. So two times length times width plus two times the length times the height plus two times your width times your height. So this all seems confusing. And I totally agree with you if you think that this sounds confusing, but this is really how this works. Allow me to take a brief moment here to go ahead and draw my best rendition of a 3D object. So I'll go ahead and draw that right there. I'll zoom on in because you know how well I can draw. I'm not even using a ruler or anything or even technology. I'm just drawing these straight lines freehanded. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Don't say anything else. <laughs> so with that, let's go ahead and finish drawing this 3D object. Again, flawless by me, Coach Anderson. But here's what we've got. So when we, when we try to really talk about the surface area here, here's what we've got going on. Two times length times width. Well, let's go ahead and say that this is your length here and this is going to be your width. Okay, sounds good. So what are, we, you know, what are we really looking at? What we're looking at here is finding the area of that bottom piece. But here's what we also know. If this down here is your length and this is your width, well then this is also your length and this is also your width. So essentially what we're doing, my math party people, this right here covers the bottom of the box and the top of the box. Length times width finds the area of the bottom, and we multiply by two because there's two sides, the opposite sides in a prism. They are the same when it comes to rectangular prisms. And that's why over here, two times length times the height. Well, guess what, my party people? If this is your height over here, let's go ahead and write this in red again. If this is our height, well, guess what? The length times the height, that's gonna be this front piece right here. And what else are we going to have? Well, guess what? When we take a look at the back side, so this right here, the back of the prism, that's why we multiply by two because the front and the back face 
are the same area. So that's where this formula really comes from, my party people. We do length times width to get the bottom, multiply by two to get the top. Length times height to get the front, times two to adhere or acknowledge the back. And then width times height, that's gonna be the side, multiply by two to get the other side here, and then the side over there. So that's what this is all about. That's what that's all about. So I basically just gave you a nice mini lesson on surface area, which I hope this really helps you out with. I gotcha. So here we go, let's move this to the side. Uh, I'll put it over here, I guess. And now we're just gonna go ahead and do some math. If you would have freaked out and gotten volume, you probably would have gotten A, but that's incorrect. So let's go ahead and find the true surface area here. The values we have are gonna be 25, 20, and 50. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So again, right here, we have 20, 25, and 50. So 25, 20, 50, cool. 25, 20, and the height is 50. So these are the three values we're gonna work with and we're gonna plug in nice and easy. So here we go, surface area equals two times length times width, so times 25 times 20. Then two times length, which is 25, times the height, which is 50. And then lastly, we have two times the width, which is 20, times the height, which is 50. So. Another question that I you know, really get very commonly is, hey coach, how do I know, you know which numbers go where? How do I know that I'm doing this right? Well, pretty much just make sure to mix and match only one time. The length and the width together, length and the height together, width and the height together. All three should be different combinations. And if you notice that, then you are good. So now that we're set, let's go ahead and calculate. We'll try to do some of this mentally. So we have ourselves two times 25, so that'll be 50. 50 times 20, that'll end up being 1,000. Okay, so that's gonna be that first part right over here. And then we'll go up to the next part. So the next part here, we have two times the length times the height. So two times 25 times 50. Two times 25 is 50. 50 times 50, that'll be 2,500. So that's what we have next. Booyah. And then lastly, let's go ahead and do this one here at say, uh, let's do purple. So here we have two times 20 times 50. So two times 20, what will that be? That's 40. 40 times 50, that'll end up being what? Well, that'll end up being 2000. So there we go. Booyah, and we're set, my math party people. And don't forget, you know, our Easter sale is still going on for our full program. So if you wanna see literally thousands of videos, just like the one we're doing right now, where I walk you through step by step, then go ahead and check out the, you know, the caption of this video or the description wherever you're watching this from so you can see how to save huge um, this weekend only. So it's only a couple of days left. Make sure you take advantage because you can get the score you want and the job you deserve without having to pay astronomical prices. So make sure to take advantage of this sale going on. That way you can get thousands of problems just like this one here. So let's go ahead and add this together and get our final answer. 1,000 plus 2,500, that's 3,500. And we're still adding 2,000. So we add that all together and we get 5,500. And this is gonna be square meters because again, we're calculating areas. So there we are, my math party people. Our answer here is D and we're all set. So like I said, my math party people, it's really about understanding the concept that you're working with first. And then from there, you know, formulas and plugging things in and calculating, that comes second but you have got to be able to understand what you're looking for first so you can point yourself in the right direction. So once again, my party people, my name is Coach Anderson. Hopefully you enjoyed this. So go ahead, give us a follow, give it a like, comment if you can, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to take advantage of our Easter holiday sale, getting up to 67% off of our ASVAB program. Cheers, everybody. See you next time.